Hello there, this is Sam and this is Car Legion. Welcome back for another video. For today's video, we have The Telluride was launched in 2016 at the International Auto Show in North America and then the production began in 2019. Now the model is called the 2020 model but they've already started selling this in 2019. You can purchase one of this at any Kia um, uh, dealership here in Ontario or all over Canada. For today's video special thanks go to Kia Mississauga for allowing me to review this vehicle and take it for a quick test drive. If you want to know more about this dealership Everything will be in the description box will be their link to their Instagram if you have any questions and of course their website Now for today's video what we're gonna do is that go first talk about the exterior So the cool features designs and then we're gonna go into the interior and show you some of the cool um, Stuff with the interior the technology this vehicle It's packed with technology and at the starting price of forty three thousand dollars It is probably one of the best deals out there at the moment very stylish very aggressive look in the front yet It gives you an impression of being a completely family SUV. First off, the name. Kia had to make sure that you know you're driving a Telluride because they put a massive name in here. And of course, at the back, as you can see, Telluride over here as well. The model that we have today, it's called the S. X V6. The Telluride comes in three packages EX, SX, which is the one that we have today, and SX Limited. Each one has different features and a different price. This one that we have today starts at $49,995, technically $50,000 price. Um, this one comes with some extra features compared to the other one, which are 20 inch machined um, uh, alloy wheels, and then you have on, on top of that you have dual panel power um, sunroof. First off, let's start with the key fob. Now, every other key fob that I've used basically has the keys over here, the buttons where you unlock, lock, open the mirrors, um, unfold the mirrors and other um, buttons. In this case, the key fob on the Telluride is exactly like the one from the Stinger and every button's on the side. Uh, you basically have unlock, lock button, you have the hold button for the trunk and then you have the siren to locate your car in a parking lot. Um, very different design from any other vehicles that I've actually driven. Now, unlike other vehicles where they have the daylight running lights, um, you basically will have just one single light in here. With the KL Telluride, you have a square, and this one actually, it looks like it's in white color, but it turns into sort of orange. So as you can see, um, so there are two features on that. First, you can use it for your turning signal, and of course for your uh, daylight running lights. Um, it's pretty cool if you look at it. And the other thing is that it sort of matches the actual style of a vehicle because the entire vehicle is very boxy. Um, and then if you look at this as well, it's pretty much um, square, not necessarily completely square, but it gives you an idea. Now, the other interesting fact about this is that the fog lights are not located on here or over here. They're located right at the bottom. And as you can see here, you have pretty much four uh, fog lights. Um, each one has two on each side and then you have the one on the left. Um, this is pretty cool. Let me show you um, how they work.
Moving on to the rims. Now for this package we have 20 inch alloy wheels and at the same time you have regular brakes which are one piston uh, in the front and one piston in the back. Pretty much standard on any other vehicle. Moving on on the rear side of the vehicle. First off, um, as I mentioned before, this is the X, the SX uh, package. On this package you get a single twin exhaust on this side. It is empty on the other side for this model. At the same time you get your backup camera looking over here then of course the massive letters saying that this is a Telluride again Kia definitely wanted to make sure that you know that you're driving a Telluride or this car when it's on the road they know it's an actual um, Telluride anyhow the turning signal on this vehicle are located at the bottom unlike other vehicles were located on the tail lights that are separately in here moving on to the tail lights very interesting design very futuristic sort of matches what the front is about um, if you actually look at both sides they look like they make up a sort of a square side they're just flipped they're sort of shaped in an L letter um, very very interesting um, feature very interesting style very different from what Kia designs usually but again this is a Telluride it's a new complete model um, let me show you how they work so as you can see the turning signal is actually located at the bottom um, this is basically your lights for daylight uh, running lights and then um, over here it's your brake light then it's your reverse light you do have reverse lights on each side as you can see now let's open the trunk press the button underneath it does not have the uh, sliding foot to open it apparently Kia says that the reason they removed that is because people are actually hurting themselves during um, an ice storm or if it was like very cold outside and, and basically people go under it and then just slide and break um, and pretty much hurt themselves so in this case they removed it uh, just for that as a security feature um, over here you have one button unlike other vehicles where you tend to have like two one is for the opening the trunk and one is to lock the car you have only one um, in this case moving on to the back um, basically as we know this is an eight seater so you have the seats here at the back so in order to fold these seats um, what you basically do is pull this and then basically pull and then push this part here and you're folding um, and then the same thing with this one here and what happens is that once you pull that uh, the top head uh, unit will basically fold and at the same time the seat with it and then you have about six feet of space over here um, and at the same time if you want to fold those seats as well you don't have to go and reach for it so see um, Kia has thought of something very smart on the side here you have two butts this is for your left and this is for your right to what we're gonna do now is press for the right and show you exactly what I mean now you have basically six feet of space once you fold all of them the other thing as well you have is that if you lift this thing here you have more space inside and then if you remove this cover in here you have your spare tire apparently based on what this says um, and I guess you just have to open this here um, on the side you have more um, space in here and you have some space on the side as well now let's close this Um, at the same time at the back if you're deciding to go camping or something um, the other thing you have is the 12 volts plug in here for your cigarette light so you can charge anything outside you also have on the side over there a charging USB port onto the left and then you have one onto the right side next on we'll move into the interior and show you from the back and then we'll move on to the front going to the back side as I mentioned the seats those are folded um, you can basically unfold them by pulling the, the actual um, this part over here and then you can lift it up and then pull it up basically now for the seat over here what you can do is that there is a button on this side that you press and then lift it up and you have the seat up again so that's pretty much to do the opposite you press the button over here and it will automatically move if you want some space if you want people to get in on this side very smart to have an actual button instead of you having it to move um, especially for senior people this is a great idea moving on to the back side 
basically you have a center um, armrest with two cup holders in here you can lift close and you can turn this thing in a third for a third seat um, the other thing is um, onto the door basically have the button here for your uh, mirror um, you have the button here for the window to roll down the window you also have a shade um, in case if you're going to a long trip and you don't like the sun or even for people in the back that don't want the sunshine into their face basically you have that option great idea um, very cool feature I actually like this especially because the first one that started to have this was a Mercedes S class that were first one to use and now you pretty much have it in very every standard car okay moving on to the back side first off what you have in here it's your sun roof technically this is not an operating sun roof it's just there you cannot open you cannot move but what you can do is basically close this um, completely so people maybe don't want lights in the back what you can do is that you can press the button over located in the front um, it does not have one in here for people to actually close it from here it's you have to ask the driver in order to do that what you do have at the top it's basically your climate control buttons over here the fan control as well and uh, two lights the other interesting fact that I find it very different from any other vehicles that I've seen is basically you have the fan here where the air comes out and you can control there with this little button this to me seems like if you notice the airplane has the same idea it's basically located at the top where you open and close it to let the um, air out um, same idea in here so you have one in here one in there and then you have two in the back one on the side and one over there moving on next to the front passenger seat so I'm going to show you some of the cool features in there first off power seats um, you have the buttons located over here for your front seat um, at the same time in front your standard buttons you have unlock and lock and your roll down window um, door very nice and sturdy let's get in and let me show you some of the cool features on the passenger side um, space leg room quite a lot very comfortable you can basically give yourself a little bit more space if you'd like just press the button and roll up one interesting fact about this car is that being a passenger you do feel a bit high the car is high off the ground and apparently it is higher than the average SUV um, very comfortable seating very comfortable seating position um, as I mentioned a lot of space in here um, the center console on this car it's very similar to a couple other vehicles that I have driven such as the Volvos um, and at the same time the Porsche Cayenne if you guys remember had similar design for handles on the side I like it a um, lot of space you got two cup holders in here um, I don't know if there's any light but you don't doesn't seem like there's any actual light in there uh, and then you have a little space here to put your phone at the same time this thing comes with equipped with the wireless charging technology you leave your phone in here and what will happen is that the light on this side will start unfortunately I don't have a wireless charging phone to show you but this light will tell you that the phone is charging the other interesting fact about this is that if you forget your phone in here charging the car will let you know that you have forgotten um, your phone and basically show you on the cluster the other thing you get is that you have a charging port here and USB connect for your uh, phone to connect to the computer off to the connect to the car and then of course your 12 volts charging um, cigarette light in there armrest very spacious um, you can remove that and have more space in there at the same time you do have another charging port in here for your phone USB and then pretty uh, short not the longest armrest I've seen out there but yet it does the job Okay, let's move on to the engine. Let's pop the hood in here. What we have in here, it's a V6 engine producing 290 horsepower and 265 pound-feet of torque um, 0 to 60 not sure the numbers are not online I'm sure you can find it but what I want to tell you is that this engine it's actually called a transverse engine It's basically located in a different position from other vehicles so for example in a different vehicle a V6 the front would be here and the front in this side it's located on this side here and then the right side it should be on that side and it's located in here that's basically what a transverse um, engine is moving on to the interior for the driver's side first of all 
tons of leg room on this vehicle very comfortable on the driver's side very easy to have access to pretty much everything whether you have your center console all the buttons uh, massive 7.2 inch screen as i mentioned previously um, now let's move on to some of the cool features inside in here the interesting fact is that if you want to lock the window, they put a little tiny human here, basically looks like a baby. Um, if you want to lock the window, so in case the kids, if you have kids in the back and they try to open the window, um, you basically can lock it through here. Another interesting fact about this car is that, let's just say that you have a child in the back and the child decides while you're stopped to open the door. The vehicle has a technology that could stop the door from opening because it realizes that there is a vehicle coming or an object on your left or right side depends which door they're trying to open which is very smart technology for a car um, today it's very rare to find that kind of technology in other vehicles I think that's pretty smart of Kia moving on to the center console as we mentioned all the buttons are, are um, located in here and then the other buttons in here the control the touchscreen display you have them in here your climate control as well so first off let's start up the this car. Buttons on the steering wheel. First of all, what you have, it, it's your modes. It's basically your source, whatever you're using, your radio, your CD or USB. Um, answer phone call and of course decline and then you have the volume and you have the source search in there in here you have your menu for the cluster you press that and you have all the option tire pressure you have all the assistance um, driver settings and then in here you have other settings so let's just scroll down you have the door um, driver assistant let's click on that this thing here is basically up and down uh, and of course press to uh, change uh, here we go and then to go back press that go into the door automatically lock automatically unlock to press unlock power lift gate and then smart lift gate so with this smart lift gate what happens is as i mentioned if you stay three seconds behind the uh, trunk what would happen is that the trunk will actually open itself without you having doing anything um, and then let's move on to the back then you have the lights uh, sound service and reset of course let's go back into that and then here you have your cruise control this is your driver assistant it's basically what happens is that if you're driving on a highway this car will remain behind a vehicle and keep a distance and if that vehicle in front of you slows down this vehicle um, or your car will slow down at the same time um, basically to avoid any collision so what we have in here it's a tri-zone automatic climate control you got a 10.2 inch multimedia interface with integrated navigation and HD traffic you have six USB charging ports you have Bluetooth connection of course Apple um, CarPlay Android Auto and of course the steering wheel uh, mounted controls you have advanced smart cruise control which which is basically this button in here um, you also have electronic parking brake as you can see over there and you have the sm smart key push start button which is overlooking in there the, the funny part is that most of the cars nowadays are moving the uh, start stop button in here um, Kia of course is kept in this position um, the other thing as well you have cooling seats for the front passenger and the driver and the heating seats and the way you do that is basically press up and every time you press up you basically gives you a uh, more uh, higher heating or uh, lower cooling on this side so you can see blue color for the cooling side and uh, the red one for the heating and then we have an eight-speed automatic transmission the best part of this vehicle starts in here this car does not have two driving modes does not have three driving modes does not have four it has seven driving modes yes seven so let me show you each one first off you have two to start and it's drive and terrain so with drive mode you have comfort you have uh, sorry press that button and then what you do is scroll eco 
sport and smart smart what it does is it learns the way you drive and based on that it will help you drive in the future once you turn this on so it learns the first i believe the first 20 kilometers how your your driving behavior is and then it learns and then based on that it will drive the vehicle um, the other thing you have is the terrain so you have in here uh, let me just show you for a second you have okay terrain uh, snow mud and you have sand so this car comes with seven driving modes pretty cool the other thing you have automatic uh, start and stop button you have the auto hold auto hold is basically if you go in front of a if you're in front of a traffic lights the car will stop itself without you actually keeping the uh, pressing the brakes down and then you have the camera view if you turn on that uh, and then you have the parking sensors as well so let's go in into let's keep this on and we'll go into comfort mode we're on to comfort mode the cool part about this car is that it starts in here now let's go into the setup mode as i mentioned this is a touch screen 10.2 uh, inch screen what you have is your navigation the screen itself it's split in three so you can have the entire navigation in here let me show you back so if you want to you click on it uh, cancel in that and you have basically the entire navigation system or you can do press home again you have the radio and you have the weather very cool massive screen in here very easy for the passengers in the back to actually see the car so let's go back into the menu uh, let's go into setup and as i said you have the navigation you have general language keyboard uh, screen saver if you want to use one system info uh, let's go back into that the other thing you have voice recognition it's basically uh, to you have to set up your own voice so you can talk to the car um, and then go to vehicles in here is telling you so every time you switch the modes you go into terrain uh, and you can put basically the alerts every time you change then you have the climate climate shows you um, how to basically to control this part here you have the lights um, ambient light so this vehicle comes equipped with ambient lights unfortunately it is daytime but what happens that this side all the way to the back it has basically uh, very similar to the BMW x7 or x5 ambient light and you can change the color here um, basically click on that and you can pick whichever color is you can see is demonstrating you the color and where they're located pretty interesting and uh, it's hard to tell and unfortunately I don't have this for a day so to show you it overnight but you probably get the idea um, since many other vehicles have the same system uh, moving on to the seat sitting position change alert uh, just basic notifications let's go into the sound sound is basically you can change where the sound where you want the sound to be do you want in center for all the speakers do you want it into the left right and as you can see whichever side you want so we're just going to leave it on to the center um, then it's your volume navigation volume if you want to turn it off and let's go back into that so here is the interesting fact about this vehicle very cool feature now you have passengers all the way to the back because you have uh, eight seats in here and sometimes people in the back cannot hear you so what Kia has come up with it's called the driver talk so you tap in there and what basically it's happening is that as you can hear um, my voice is going to the back right now and uh, my voice is basically coming from the back to the front so that means that the people in the back can hear me so let's say you have kids are not listening to you because they can't hear you um, right now with this technology they're able to hear you so you can scream as much as you want to your kids pretty um, pretty interesting uh, technology I, I mean you don't have to scream at them but you can sort of tell them to be quiet so it's very 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 smart technology I absolutely love that the other thing is you have um, let me turn that off because it's very annoying 
and now it's off uh, you have the quiet mode so what happens in here is that the quiet mode is that the uh, now if you're going to a long trip and you have kids in the back sleeping and you don't want to wake them up but you want to listen to the radio or some music to keep you awake what you can do is basically press into quiet mode and the speakers in the front will be the ones to be on instead of the back so the back are completely shut off and you have only music in the front uh, let me give you an idea so as you can hear only in the front right now you're listening to the music only in the front of the car not the back at all very good technology very very good technology so going in back in here then we have rear uh, rear climate control besides the buttons that you have located in here to control the climate you have access to them right in here uh, so you can check your temperature front um, first of all we're gonna turn it on so right now it's in auto mode so you can turn it off as well the other thing as well is that if you don't want your kids to play with it what you can do is lock the control so what will happen is that the controls in the back will not work the only way you can change that is by pressing this and now they have access to those controls for the climate very very smart technology for this part moving on next will be the cluster which we have way more technology as well first off if you decide you're going to turn left as i mentioned before each mirror has a camera and what you do if you press that it will show you on the left side it will pop up and tell you the objects on your left because of that camera if you turn right it will do the same thing um, you have a camera on each side of the mirror now going in to reverse I'm going to put this in reverse and show you the backup camera very good technology that's a 360 mode as you can see um, you have other modes in here you can check only the back of the car you can check the sides whichever side you want in here and then um, I'm just gonna go back and look for this part so this is basically the reverse this is probably one of the clearest um, backup cameras I've seen so far um, as you can see it's extremely clear let me just show you this part and at the same time as I mentioned you have the 360 in here what you can do is zoom in and zoom out um, touch screen is probably very very intuitive uh, very easy to tap and all that so let's go into the settings and you can change each setting in here but as I mentioned the options to change are basically in here you press that you can see only the uh, rear side of the car and that's your side of the car as well um, and in here so um, and then you can adjust the brightness and all that very very good technology um, I must say I absolutely love the 360 side it looks like it's actually real and it can detect all the objects around the vehicle and when you turn they turn to tell you um, exactly the position of the car and if you try to move where it will go to um, very good um, then just put it into park mode the buttons over here um, what we basically have this is your light on the left and on the right normal very standard for it you have two buttons in here this is for your front um, sun uh, sunroof and then this is for the rear sunroof now as I mentioned before the rear sunroof does not open what the only thing that opens is basically the sun shade you open and close in there but what you can open it's a sunroof in the front and You also get uh, the Uvo. Uh, Uvo is basically an app that you can download on your phone and basically connect to your car and tell you everything about your car, the service, update, very similar to other manufacturers they use. I have one for my car, for Ford. Um, similar idea on this as well. Moving on to the side of the um, steering wheel, you basically have the cluster um, light. You can control it from here, your distance control, and of course this is for the highway distance control. For highway, this is your traction, traction off and on, and that's for your trunk. You can hold it. Um, the interesting fact is that some of the cars have it on the side. Kia has decided to use it over here.
Um, on the side of the door you have two memory settings for your seat. Um, of course you have for the mirror control as well and you have unlock lock button and you can control the mirrors for the front and the back. Okay, so we're going for a quick test drive. This is Eric. Hi Eric guys. works for uh, Kia Mississauga. Do you say Mississauga Kia or Kia Mississauga? We say Mississauga Kia. But... Nice. Um, so we're going to go for a drive and see how this thing handles, um, how it drives, the comfort, brakes, performance. We're going to test all the driving modes. They have seven in here. I've You rarely see cars today with seven modes. Oh, that's right. It's pretty nice to have it, especially because this is a family car and you might want to take it off-road sometimes. You're going uh, camping and all that. Anyhow, for now we have it into sport mode. I want to try how this does. We know um, comfort, very standard. 3.8 V6. Not bad. We're not looking here for a track mode, but Keep in mind this car, it's not a light car, but uh, the other thing is that you're pulling 5,000 pounds, that's the tow capacity on this car, so you do require some torque and horsepower. Um, one thing I'm noticing with this car, it feels like very wobbly, kind of a boat style, but the reason behind that is because you get comfort, you don't want it stiffer, otherwise um, this for long trips or day to day is not going to be the most comfortable. And I say that from experience because I drive one, probably the most stiffest car on the market today, which is a Focus RS. So being in a car like this is very different, very um, enjoyable. Now we're driving in sport mode. Um, the steering wheel stiffness hasn't changed. Um, it's still the same. What you basically do get is the throttle reaction is much faster than you'd have it on eco mode or comfort. You gonna go on that side, you say? Sure. Please. That's Lakeshore? Uh, we'll go all the way down, yeah. Let, let's go this okay. side. Braking. We have one piston in the front, one piston in the back. Very standard for um, other cars as well. Does a very it does a fine job uh, to make sure you stay on the road. It's not a performance, don't expect the four pistons, you don't get that because with the price, you will not get that kind of braking performance. But you're not planning to take this to a track, you need this for day to day, you wanna make sure that it handles well. How do you like the quietness of the cabin? This is very quiet. Um, as I mentioned in the video uh, previously when I was um, reviewing the interior is that when I first saw this car at the Toronto Auto Show, it looked expensive inside, very luxurious, but it feels the same way. They have not cheaped out on this car, they've used very good materials. Mm -hmm. The buttons don't look cheap. Um, the steering wheel, the leather interior, very nice. The, the trim, everything. Um, but going back to what you're saying about the actual, qu very quiet. You and I can have a proper conversation while we're almost in traffic mm -hmm. and not hear anything outside. Like, very smooth. That's right. Very, very smooth. I like that. For a family car, you need that. Um, especially if you're driving this daily, um, you want that comfort. Oh, no. Of course, the transmission is not one of the fastest, but it's good enough. And again, uh, it's really fuel economical. Efficient, yeah. It's yeah. better than our Sorento, actually, on fuel economy, which is surprising because it's a bigger vehicle. These are very nice roads. The idea here is it's not for performance. We're not um, looking into a performance vehicle. This is your day-to-day -day for a family. This is for your long trips. Um, that's what you want. You want a fuel efficiency. And if you get a performance car, you will not find fuel efficiency. The comfort on this is very good. Um, although over here we don't have a rough road, it's very well paved. I want to see and test it onto some rough roads and see how it does. Very quiet. Uh, we just ran over some of the potholes and it's 
that that's pretty good. It avoids you don't feel it as much inside. Mm -hmm. How does it feel for the boxiness? Like it's a big vehicle, but in my mind when I drive, I feel I don't feel big driving the vehicle. I'm I'm tall. Like, yep. So to me, this feels like where I should be. Um, feels the perfect size. It does feel a bit high off the ground. And as you mentioned, this is probably like seven inch uh, higher than the rest of the uh, same SUVs, I believe. Okay. Um, and this is, it does feel higher. Compared to the X7 and the X5, it's not as high. Um, it doesn't feel as high. For some reason, that car felt higher. This feels very standard for me. Now, let me put the seat, that's it, that's all the way down because the seat position, you see on the BMW X5, what they did is that they lifted the sitting position, um, which made you think that you're actually higher, but you're technically not higher, it's mm -hmm. what the, where the, the seat, seat is. is located. In this case, your seat is where it should be, you have it at the bottom. I feel very, it feels normal, um, but not um, other SUVs which are very low to the ground, very low ground clearance. This on the other side, you want to have that high um, ground clearance because during snow time, if you're taking this off road, you don't want you want to avoid kind of scratching the car underneath as well as you're That's driving right. some rough roads as well. So this helps. Um, it's very easy to see around um, this car. You have a visual pretty much on every side. It's very easy to, especially when you're parking on very tight parking spots this is perfect I took it out on that spot over there and because you have all this technology um, it was very easy to maneuver and Definitely. take the car out so that's that's very important for someone that especially lives uh, downtown um, like downtown Toronto where the roads are very tight and there's traffic everywhere so you want to have that um, comfort wise feels very civilized very um, to the point I kind of feel sleepy <laughs> it makes you because it's so quiet inside definitely yeah like you don't hear a thing yeah it's <laughs> very very quiet as you as you pass cars it's more like a like that's it's a very it feels like the engine is not there at some point unless you're actually pressing the gas pedal down there you go, just yeah. that. Uh, we're going straight. It's up to you if you want to hit onto the highway, we can do that too, if you want to see higher speeds on the vehicle. Okay, uh, where are we going to get the highway? The highway there? right here, yep. Let me see this. Okay, we're going to put this in cruise control. Cruise control is on. Smart. Yeah, now you have it on. Now it's on. So right now and this is your uh, distance assistant control yeah. so it's basically similar to the Nissan where you control the distance with a car in front of you uh, let me make sure this is right now we have no cars in front does he have lane assist yes you'll have to put it on though, on the left side on the dash on the left will be a little yes. white car okay there we go so now there we have go. lane assist um, I believe, let's try this, will it be similar? I, oh, so he puts you back yeah, into the... so you got the three different levels. You got active lane key visit or lane departure warning system or just like the normal little just indicate. Okay. But it'll actually push you back in. So it's actually a driverless car right now with your advanced cruise control and lane key assist, it'll drive itself. So, you see now the cars that I've driven, they vibrate but they don't put you back into the lane. Yeah. This is actually driving itself technically let's just say half self driving style yeah so the only thing is that it's got driver attention warning so it knows as soon as you take off your hands off the wheels within 15 seconds it'll tell you to put your hands back on the wheel this is so interesting ah uh, there you go it's showing now it says keep your hands on the steering wheel there you go and if you do it too often they'll just take lane keep assist off completely i've done it a few times and then they just take off lane keep assist when you do it too many times without holding on to the wheel for long trips yeah. this is awesome definitely this is absolutely awesome um, let me know when to get off. Yeah, we can take the next right exit, actually. I just want to test it out and see how it... There you go. So I am not touching the steering wheel at all, and it's driving technically itself. It's keeping a distance with the car in front of me, 
and at the same time it doesn't matter what well if you set your limit at 100 kilometers will not go above that but what it does is that will keep the limit under to make sure it keeps the distance with the car in front of you so right now even though okay it's telling me to, okay my hands so right now I've set it at 100 kilometers an hour but the car is not doing exactly 100 right now it is because we have no obstruction in front of us we can get off this one yep we can do that okay so but if you turn the signal it will not there you go yeah so it turns it off it yeah. turns it off because it knows that you want to turn um, pretty cool technology that's for long trips that is amazing very very smart very intuitive uh, and even in rain and in fog I tried it with the stinger and it's the same technology and it's pretty right on like I like this work. kind of technology, especially for people like me that I, I love to uh, take the cars on a, on a road trips. And sometimes you get a bit tired. I mean, not so, I'm not saying that you should sleep. We're not there yet. But if you feel a bit tired and somehow you're distracted, uh, distracted, sorry, distracted from um, the car coming in the left on the right side, this will help you a lot. Um, Anyways, we're done for today. Thanks for watching my video. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and check out my other videos. At the same time, if you are interested in a model like this, uh, the dealership website and the Instagram will be in the description box. And if you want to reach out, whether to Eric, who manages your Instagram? Um, just our Mississauga Kia page, but I also have my Facebook page, which is Eric Willett, uh, sales professional at Kia Mississauga. Perfect. Mississauga Kia. I'll add in the description box. If people have any questions, if they're interested in a vehicle like this, you can reach out. Thanks for watching. Bye. See ya.